Welcome to Gateshead Deanery's uh, Sunday service for this, the third Sunday of Advent. One more Advent Sunday and then uh, Christmas Day. If you, it's the first time that you've watched this service, um, welcome. I uh, hope you are blessed uh, through it. We've got an Old Testament reading, uh, familiar words from Isaiah, speaking to uh, a nation that was oppressed and uh, going through really difficult, war, worn down uh, times. Uh, so that resonates today. Uh, a gospel reading uh, from John, uh, where uh, Jesus's cousin, John the Baptist, uh, speaks about the fact that he's not the Messiah, uh, but speaks about Jesus, uh, who is. And uh, we've got some prayers uh, to pray, uh, some uh, worship songs to sing, and uh, a piece uh, to share with you uh, towards the end. Uh, and a blessing. Just as uh, we begin a short prayer. Lord Jesus, uh, you know how we feel. You know our situations, how hard it is, how different it is for each person. Yet you also bring us peace and calm and joy. So that is what we ask for from you through your Holy Spirit today. That through this service, you will speak to us in one way, one message, one thing that we can carry through into this week. We pray this, Jesus, uh, in your precious name. Amen. Enjoy the service. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me out to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up broken-hearted, to proclaim, proclaim liberty to the captives and to release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide those who mourn in Zion to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of the faint spirit. They will be called oaks of the righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, and they shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For the Lord loves justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known amongst the nations, and their offspring amongst the people. All who have seen them shall acknowledge that they are the people who the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation, and he has covered me in the robes of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself out with a garland, and a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. 
This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptising if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptise with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan where John was baptising. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Some thoughts about our readings. First of all, how are you? How do you feel uh, in the midst of these times and what times we are living through? I wonder when you listen to the Isaiah, Isaiah reading that Mark read a little moment ago, um, did it resonate with you? Did you kind of get that Isaiah was speaking God's message to the Jewish people? Uh, they were surrounded by the Assyrians and the Babylonians. Uh, they didn't know who to side with. Uh, they were worn down and they were about to go into captivity. And this is the message that Isaiah was bringing to them. They were asking the question, will this never end? Where is God? When will he restore Israel? Where are we going? There was no way out. No end in sight. And God's message comes and on the one hand it's not a very comforting message. It's a message on the one hand of this is your due punishment for being faithless to your God. On the other hand it's that this isn't going to be forever because does, God does love you and he has promised to care for you and he will bring you back from your captivity. So look forward to this. And today's passage from Isaiah is a look forward to this. Just a few reminders. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint heart. Lovely words and a great assurance to them. Going on to say that justice will be restored. There are many stories of faithful Christians in difficult situations, Isaiah mentions prisoners, and that made me think about um, stories of people who love the Lord Jesus and filled with his spirit, unjustly imprisoned, would rejoice because they had a hope to look forward to when Jesus comes again, something we think about through Advent. A time when they know that everything would be righted, justice would be done. A time when tears would be wiped away. And it will be with Jesus. 
There are many stories of Christian prisoners, unjustly imprisoned, as I said, but singing and dancing God's praise. St. Paul was one of them. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, under the Nazis, and also Maximilian Kolbe, the priest in Auschwitz, who took someone else's place and, uh, along with other people, crowded into a small cell that uh, just wouldn't take all the people. They sang God's praise. In the Gospel, we hear of John the Baptist, and we don't actually hear of the baptism uh, of Jesus, but we uh, hear uh, John pointing quite clearly to saying he's not the Messiah, uh, but Jesus is, and using some words uh, from the Old Testament uh, as a prophecy. Remind me of a couple of stories. Um, clergy have ender stories uh, about baptisms and the like. Um, and one of them was uh, speaking to a bishop in a diocese somewhere in the world. And he said he had a tricky situation because there were a number of prisoners uh, who were to be uh, baptised and confirmed. And if you didn't know, uh, confirmation is where an adult uh, declares their faith uh, if they've been baptised as a child. Uh, but sometimes you haven't been baptised as a child and therefore you're baptised as part of that service. There was one lad who was in prison and he was absolutely excited that he had uh, f decided to follow Jesus and he seemed to be filled with the Spirit, um, but perhaps not the brightest of a penny uh, in the purse. And he couldn't see why he couldn't be baptised, even though he'd been baptised as a child, because he wanted the excitement, he wanted that uh, that feeling. And so it was a tricky situation. Um, the bishop actually did it by announcing to everybody else that this was just uh, a reminder uh, for his baptism uh, before, so he was allowed uh, to do that. I'm sure he still thought he was being baptised again. Uh, but the bishop spoke about the excitement and the fire and the joy that he had. And remember, he was in prison. Don't know what his sentence was for, uh, but he was on fire for God. I had the privilege uh, of also baptising uh, a family, uh, the dad and the uh, teenage son. Uh, the dad uh, was from Iran and he had, uh, well, he never quite shared his whole story, but he had a, an awful situation where he had to go back uh, to Iran to uh, get a passport. And of course, he was arrested when he arrived and was imprisoned. And there were issues with um, his uh, son as well being poorly. And we arranged with the Baptists uh, for uh, a full immersion baptism. It's very exciting. And uh, that's another story. But afterwards, there was so much relief in the dad's heart uh, that he'd come such a long journey, including that imprisonment, including uh, issues about right to remain and the like. Hard, hard journey. But he was on fire uh, for and thankful for that uh, baptism. Last thought about baptism. What were Jesus' feelings at his baptism? I'm sure they were very mixed. That wonderful uh, testament in one of the Gospels of the voice from heaven, just assuring him and those around, this is my son, listen to him. But then also it was the start of a long road. And Jesus already had portents of that. It's going to be a hard road. And on that road was a cross that he would have to bear, a literal cross he would have to be on. That's a hard journey to follow. But then after the cross, the resurrection and the ascension to heaven and the sending of his spirit. So again, there's encouragement to us in that. So to end, let's think about our present predicament. Amidst everything and the uncertainty going forward, look for rejoicing. Count your blessings and number them one by one. Let's determine to walk with Jesus every day. He knows the path and he is our rock and he is our guide. Rejoice because as we celebrate at Advent, that the ending is glorious as it will be with Jesus forever. No wonder they danced in prisons.
when they knew of the uh, justice and the writing and the joy of being with Jesus forever. Amen. We are free to declare our beliefs, unlike many of our brothers and sisters around the world. So let's use these words to affirm our faith together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. As John was that voice crying in the wilderness, we listen to his words and join our prayers to his. Loving God, we pray you will help us testify to the light. Fill your church with zeal to proclaim the gospel of Christ, to proclaim the message of hope and comfort especially in these troubled times. Through the waters of baptism, may we be united as one, baptised not just by water, but by the fire of the Holy Spirit, constantly renewing and equipping each one of us to be true disciples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make straight the way of the Lord. Lord, we pray for all the crooked and misshapen places in the world where the paths of understanding and cooperation seem ever distant. 
and people are all too easy to follow the easy path instead of the right path. We pray for the leaders of the world, especially those facing difficult choices and uneasy decisions. Help them to be guided by your spirit. We pray for peace in troubled lands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for neighbours, those around us, known and unknown. At this time, we pray for families with young children, especially thinking of those who have delayed family baptisms or have had to make fresh arrangements. And Father, be with all those considering baptism, but unsure because of the current situation. As worship services return to our churches, help us to continue to think of neighbours unable to attend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all who have worked hard to produce a vaccine against coronavirus. And thank you that the first results look promising. But we continue to pray for all who work and frontline NHS staff. And also the many who work, often unseen, in the wilderness and dark places, among those who are so often forgotten or ignored but in the greatest need, and in so doing, bring relief to so many in many different ways. We pray for all who work in the area of mental health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who mourn, for whom life seems dark, the future less than certain. Bring the light that John testified to into all darkened lives, Bring them from the wilderness and help them to see the hope and the certainty in that light. As we all move through this time of Advent, may we be assured of the joy and glory that is there for us all to share. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray confident in the grace of baptism and led by the light of Christ. Amen. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right. With Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We come to that time in the service where we share the peace. We usually have a few words from scripture uh, and then the words of the peace. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Do share that peace uh, with those uh, you bubble with, uh, live with, uh, or maybe um, text somebody, ring somebody and just share that peace today. May it be in your hearts through this week.
in this season of hope and anticipation. We pray for God's blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. That's the end of our service. Uh, I hope it has been a blessing to you. What was the one thing, uh, the thing that just spoke to your heart, to your mind, to your spirit? Uh, what will you take into this week uh, from this? What will infect your prayers? What will infect the way you speak to people, the way you think? And what will fuel you and inspire you to carry on your walk with Jesus uh, each and every day? Every blessing and hope you can join us again.